Let's bring in former Homeland Security Counterterrorism and COVID Task Force Advisor to Vice President Mike Pence, Olivia Troy, and Washington Post investigative reporter Craig Whitlock. He's the author of the Afghanistan Papers, A Secret History of the War, out on August 31st. Uh, Olivia, let me start with you. Uh, some on the right are claiming that this withdrawal would have been smooth under Trump and that he would have evacuated everyone, no problem. Uh, you pushed hard against, you pushed back hard against that narrative, tweeting, uh, there were cabinet meetings about this during the Trump administration where Stephen Miller, who was a, a domestic policy advisor to Trump, would peddle his racist hysteria about Iraq and Afghanistan. He and his enablers across uh, government would undermine anyone who worked on solving the SIV issue by devastating the system at DHS and state. Um, Olivia, I know that uh, Stephen Miller's wife, uh, Katie Miller, is pushing back on that. She also worked with you in the Trump administration. But what kind of arguments were they making against taking in Afghan partners and refugees when you were there? What did, what did you witness? You know, I find these, you know, arguments and narratives frustrating, very, very frustrating, because when I was there in the White House working on these issues, it was nothing but increasing restrictions on immigration and restricting, restricting refugee admissions. And all of these categories are part of that process. And the SIVs are part of that, P2s, all of this falls into the pipeline of these offices with resources that were gutted during the Trump administration, where many of us who actually worked the refugee issues, who were pushing to make sure that they did not reduce the ceiling number for refugees and ensure that this process continued, especially prioritizing the interpreters who had served overseas with military and intelligence officers, would be able to get through that system. and. You know, it was it was a very challenging situation, and uh, you know these claims that Trump would have done this differently and would have saved all of them. Well, he had several years to do that, and the numbers speak for themselves. The numbers of people, Afghans, and especially Iraqis, the Iraqis who were still waiting to come here, very few got through the system. And that was in large part because, uh, in your view, there was just an anti-refugee mentality uh, being pushed by. Folks like Stephen Miller, I think you've described situations where uh, if Stephen caught wind of other officials uh, trying to push in favor of allowing refugees into the country, he would seek to cut those people out, ice those people out. There were certainly situations where these meetings to discuss refugee admissions and these exact topics where people would be blocked at these meetings. There were times when these meetings got smaller, when advisors that needed to be in those meetings were not included and they were purposely dropped off the list. Or there were certainly times when I would show, uh, show up at a meeting when I wasn't welcome, but it was my job to cover the topic. And I knew that uh, former Vice President Pence was paying attention to this closely. He has a son who's in the military. He understands the issue. And he had specifically asked uh, that you know, SIVs, P2s be prioritized in the process. And he would call and sometimes check in and say, where are we on the applications of many of these visas and SIVs? And I would say, well, sir, they're stuck in the process and I'm doing my best to navigate through the system. But we all knew the reality of what was happening here in the situation. And Craig, uh, regarding the situation today, uh, it's looking like the Taliban were essentially able to bri bribe large numbers of Afghan forces to surrender. Uh, how did we get outbid? Did, are we, were we outbid by the Taliban? Is that what happened here? I don't think outbid. I think that you have to remember in Afghanistan, they have, they have a traditional way of war there where militia commanders and, and military commanders, they kind of put their finger in the wind to see which way things are blowing and they want to be on the victorious side. And it became clear as the Taliban moved from city to city and provincial capital to provincial capital that the Afghan security forces were taking on the chin. And you know, if you're an Afghan commander and you're isolated and you don't have a lot of faith in your government, the Taliban says, well, surrender or die, or we'll give you some money to persuade you to switch allegiance. It's a pretty tempting offer and hard to resist. And Craig, in your book, you lay out how various administrations uh, were a part of this failure uh, that became uh, the U.S. commitment in Afghanistan. Uh, things fell apart the way they did, uh, you write in your book, in part because of what we saw over the course of many years. What can you tell us about that? Well. Dating back to the Bush administration, the U.S. government, the whole strategy 
for getting out of Afghanistan hinged on building up an Afghan army and an Afghan paramilitary police force. The whole idea was to build this enormous military that could defend their own country against the Taliban or other threats. And this started 18 years ago to try and build it up. But from the beginning, it was a flawed plan. Uh, and our U.S. officials knew this, that this was going to be really difficult to pull off. The Afghans were largely illiterate. They weren't familiar with our weapon systems. Uh, corruption became an enormous problem where Afghan commanders would steal the salaries and food and other benefits due their own troops. And this was a persistent problem for three presidents until, Vice President, uh, until President Biden came into office. So we knew this force wasn't strong enough to defend themselves, and yet they were everything our strategy hinged on. So we could kind of see this coming for a number of years, but it really just kind of, uh, you know, they fell apart at the end there. And I know in your book you, you talk about how uh, the, the American people were essentially misled about the progress being made in Afghanistan uh, throughout all of this. Olivia, let me just get back to you. Just about every assessment had the Afghan government uh, falling after a U.S. exit. Uh, what were the conversations like uh, that you were a part of? Uh, did, was that taken into consideration uh, by the Trump administration, that, that this was likely to fall apart quickly if the U.S. were to say, okay, we're getting out? Well, I think, yes, those conversations were had, and certainly the, I think the intelligence was there um, about this possibility. I covered this topic from the perspective of counterterrorism. I, uh, you know, I had a, a regional person that covered the portfolio on staff as well, and so he could speak to probably more directly in terms of that and to those discussions because he was in those discussions specifically about the withdrawal. All right, Craig Whitlock, uh, Olivia Troy, thank you both so much. And again, we should mention Craig is the author of the forthcoming book, The Afghanistan Papers, A Secret History of the War. Be sure to check that out. Uh, and, and Craig, thank you so much for writing that book. Uh, you know, we've had 20 years uh, since we got into Afghanistan, and it's important that people understand this has been building up for two decades now. It didn't just happen in the last couple of weeks. Thank you so much, Craig. We appreciate it.